Welcome to Women's Wealth, the podcast with me, Joanne. My mission is to educate, inspire, and empower you all to step into your own life of wealth. That feeling of being so rich in your mind, body, and soul. I'm so happy to have you here. Let's get straight into it. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Women's Wealth, the podcast with me, Joanne. I'm happy, so happy to have you here. So either if you're listening or you're watching, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please remember to like, subscribe, leave comments if you think I am worthy and deserving of that. And let's get straight into it today. I'm solo today and I have a huge list actually of podcast ideas And I'm just trying to make them fit into, obviously, where the moon is at, where we're at in the year, and where, you know, just so they fit in with where I think they're going to be most beneficial. So today, I decided to go with my podcast based on things to tell your younger self, because we're not quite halfway through the year yet. So we're only on month four, and... I was going to do a bit of a reflective podcast halfway through the year, having a look at what we've achieved, but we're we're not there yet. I was a bit ahead of myself with that. So when I had a little look at my list of ideas, I thought this was a really nice one to do at this time of year because it, it is reflective, but we're also still very early on in the year. We're only in the first quarter um we've just passed through the eclipse energies so I thought yeah and why not make this a bit of an active journaling podcast so grab your journal or you can listen and then do it after and it's going to be a bit of a coaching type podcast as well I haven't done one of these for a while because well I haven't been coaching so I guess maybe that's why I moved a bit away from podcast coaching Um, and I'm going to be answering these questions sharing my own thoughts so that you can reflect and do your own telling yourself telling your younger self sorry anything any what would you tell your younger self I have a list of about 12 things so your journaling your activity for this podcast is to do the same imagine that you're talking to your younger self and I wasn't, I'm not going to give an age because you will intuitively picture an age that you feel like you need to hear these things. Each thing that you journal on could be for a different version of your younger self. We are constantly changing. We are constantly evolving. We are not the same person who we were when we were 15, 18, 22, 25, 26, 32, 35. Okay. So whoever it is that you want to talk to, you may want to go back to even being younger than those ages I've said. And some of these that I have written down do go back to my younger, younger self. So feel free to play around with this. Now, the benefits of doing this are immense because at the same time, we're healing our inner child which again is quite a buzz thing at the moment, you know, ancestral healing, shadow work, inner child. And it is important. We all have this little girl within us that has always been there and will always be there. I think I shared in another podcast or maybe online, I've moved my picture now, it's just on the wall. I have a picture of my younger self. I think I'm about three because my sister's a tiny little baby um that I look at and think right I'm doing this for her this little girl who had her whole life ahead of her these dreams these wishes these desires she went through these troubles and I am doing this as an adult for her so it's nurturing your own inner child it's nurturing your own teenager it's nurturing your own early 20s, 30s, whoever you're going to be talking to today. It's healing, it's growth. So let's get straight into it. The first thing that I wrote down when I was thinking about this, and I think this would go out to my 18-year-old self, nothing works out the way you planned, so stop stressing out. 
And I think this is really important, a really important reminder for my grown-ups as well. We have all of these things that we put into place. We have these plans. Well, we sometimes have these plans pushed upon us. Think tradition, think expectation, think the things that people tell us that we should be doing at certain ages and when we're not, it stresses us out. So at 18, for example, I would have been planning to go to university, finish my degree, do a degree, find a career, love my career forever and ever and ever until the day I'm ready to retire and then retire and that is it. I also, I think I've mentioned this before, wrote a letter when I turned 18 to my future self. And some of those things have come true in a different form. But again, that, how many of you actually just flicking? So in that letter, I wrote that I would be married to the boyfriend that I had at the time. And we would be living happily ever after until the day we die. And I don't think we live in a time now where many of us marry that first love. And as I've grown older, yes, your first love is a beautiful thing, but reflect on the person that you were back then, your first boyfriend, your first love, the first person you thought that you were going to marry. Are you that same person? And could that the version of you now actually be with that person as they are now if you know them still we may not even speak to them so these hopes and dreams that we have that sort of put us in this box of what we think that we should do we have these plans we think we should be married and have children and have a house and have a career and we have this plan in our head but it doesn't always work out like that And that goes for any plan that we might have in life. Things happen, plans change. And I would tell my younger self to, you know, I've already said, don't stress out, be flexible. Because I know, not not in a negative way, but I used to be, and I'm still recovering from this, very controlling over situations. And because I was anxious and I had anxiety, not having control would freak me out. So understanding that things don't always work out the way you plan. And then add on to that, that they can work out even better than you imagined. Yes, have a plan, have an idea, have a dream, but be be flexible. Allow yourself to change with that because amazing things can happen. So maybe you'd like to go back and tell your younger self that as well, because we need to know that things do change plans don't always fulfill and that is not a negative that is not a bad thing because I would also add to that that they happen for a reason the changes happen for a reason and back when I was younger and I had all these plans and you know this is how my life is going to pan out the universe had different things it had had a different idea and I'm sure that you can backtrack over the years you know, however many years you want to go back to see where you thought you were going down one path and something happened and you took a different path and now you wouldn't have it any other way. So just a little bit of a reflection there. So nothing turns out the way you plan. And I don't think I have anything that I've planned and it's always gone exactly because there's always something unpredictable happens and you learn to go with it. So I would tell my younger self to do that, to learn to go with it as well. Maybe that's an extra one. Oh, this is a good one. Acknowledge when you're wrong. And I think I would maybe tell my 26, 27 year old self this, because at this time I spent, I was in a relationship for five years, started off well, um, It was somebody that had been in my life for a very long time. And, you know, this happened quite a lot. So you end up in a relationship with this person. But quite soon on, I would say things turned very toxic. And I thought I was right in trying to 
make these changes, trying to make this other person stop doing the things that he was doing because I didn't like it. And reflecting on this, I should have just held my hands up and I knew that I was wrong. I knew that I was wrong. Again, this goes back to me being controlling as well, not in a negative. I wanted the, you know, air quotes, perfect relationship of going for country walks at the weekend and no drinking and doing all of these fun activities. However, the person that I was with at that time didn't want those things or if he did he just at the time wasn't mature enough and I this is where we clashed because the more I tried to control and be the person in the right the more negativity and toxicity came out of that and I don't think at any point then I acknowledged that I was doing anything wrong I was the victim I just wanted to for life to be this way and I should have just let go, acknowledge I was wrong and not put both of us through everything that we went through. And it took me a long time also to come to the realisation that it wasn't just him because, yes, I didn't do anything like he did or say things like that and, again, it was a different kind of toxicity for me because I first of all kept going back and kept believing that this will be different this will be different this will be different never acknowledged I was in the wrong never held my hands up and said you know what I'm trying to control too much here and it obviously all backfired and ended I would say messily in a situation that I wouldn't wish on anybody else a situation that was frightening But now I know that I should have just acknowledged that I was wrong. I was trying to control. This isn't right for us now. We're not the right people for each other. We both think differently. Let's part and go our separate ways instead of just trying to control and make myself right. I am right in thinking that this is how we should be living. We shouldn't have. I I understand that now. And I would go back and tell her, let this go. Look, you're not actually perfect in this situation. You are being wrong. You're wrong by trying to control this. So please just let it go. Learn from it. Be your authentic self is number three that I have written down here. And again, this has taken me a long time to live into. Who would I say this to? Maybe my 14, 15 year old self who definitely try to fit herself into again expectation other people's boxes acting living looking a certain way instead of following my own authenticity and even as a teenager and I'm sure if you reflect back on this as well that it kind of goes with the territory of being a teenager we're trying to find our own place in the world we're trying to find who we are what we want to wear how we want to look so you kind of gravitate towards the people who you know might be popular or they're doing certain things that you think that you should be doing you kind of dress similar and I notice this now as an adult you know when you see groups of girls it's like and I have a joke about it we didn't have We didn't have phones, actually, but I don't think we ever texted you what you were wearing. I can't remember. But I always have a joke of, gosh, they all got the text this morning because they will be wearing the same Adidas trainers, jeans, little crop top. And it's the fact that they are living as one, an authentic, not authentic, a non-authentic group of people because they're all unsure of who they are. So I would tell my 14-year-old, 15-year-old self, be who you want to be. Have your hair how you want to have your hair. Wear the clothes that you want to wear. Do the things that you want to do because being a sheep is not going to get you anywhere. And it took me, I would say, I don't know, when did I start to really be myself? I think maybe 21, 22, I sort of got my own identity as in the clothes that I wore. And I stepped away from dressing like everybody else. Not that I was, whoa, out there. But I started to have a different interest in fashion and music. And 
But again, you then gravitate towards people who are very similar to you within those friendship groups. So I'm unsure. I definitely try to live as my authentic self now. I try to make sure that I use my authentic words. You know, my podcast is a really good way for me to step into my authentic self because it gives me a safe space to share my authentic voice. And I feel that, yeah, maybe I can safely say now I'm living as my authentic self. But I live very differently now. I don't follow a group. I don't, you know, I have friends, of course. But I think as you get older, that sort of group hack mentality shifts. So you are able to find yourself a little bit more. But even still, it's are you living and doing things that you enjoy? Or are you doing things that you think you should be doing? So again, reflecting on that. Am I doing this because I think I should? Or am I doing this because... I want to. And these are the questions I do ask myself when I start something new or I'm doing something or I agree to something. Now I feel like my authentic self is linked a lot to my intuition. So if that if something feels off and I don't really want to do it, then I won't do it. And for a while, I would say even when I first moved out into Dubai, I wasn't living as my authentic self because you're sort of always dropped into this situation of you know it's kind of like being back in high school so you find the group of people that you get on well with the most and who you want to socialize with and you kind of take on their persona and again you're back into this not being authentic group of people because you're new to a country you're new to a place and I know I've chatted about this before, but then once my authentic self did start to really step up and I realized that I am not living in a way that's true to me, those people fell off. Not that they were bad people at all. Some very amazing people I've met since I've been out here and I had a good couple of years with a group of friends that meant the world to me. But once I started to really tune into how I wanted to live and how I wanted to think and what I wanted to do, it kind of shifted slightly. It shifted a lot, actually, not just slightly. So, yeah, I would tell tell myself, be authentic. Do the things that light you up. I can even think of examples of, you know, going to parties and being in places I really, really didn't want to be in. Again, I wasn't unsafe. It wasn't anything terrible but just my authentic self probably just wanted to go home and sleep. You know, the music's too loud, too many people talking, that kind of uncomfortable feeling that I would just sit with because that's how I felt. That's what I felt like I needed to do because that's what everyone else was doing. So I was just, again, following the crowd. So be authentic, use your authentic voice. And for me, it does come down to the way I look, the way I dress, the way I talk because that is me. And I know we always say, don't judge a book by its cover. However, for some people, the way they look is part of them and the way that they want to represent their thoughts and feelings. And for me, it's through clothes, it's through my hair, it's through my tattoos. Just realise, sorry, if you're listening to the podcast, I've just realised I've got the, uh, what's this grass called again? I can't remember. Anyway, I've got sidetracked there and I felt like something was touching my shoulder, but it's the it's the grass, the pam, pam, pampas, pampas grass, pampas, pampas grass, sorry. Sorry for listeners. Uh, if you're watching, you've probably seen it there the whole time. So yeah, be authentic, be your authentic self, use your authentic voice and just reflect. And this is why this exercise is really important because you'll come up with things that you want to tell your younger self that also gives you a chance to think, am I actually still doing that? Am I doing that now? What have I learned from it? The next one, not everyone likes you. And this is a big one, even as an adult. Again, now I think this is sort of ingrained in me. So I would go back to even teenage again, maybe younger. Not everyone likes you and that's okay. Do you like everybody? Like when you walk into a room or when you talk to people, do you like everybody you meet? Maybe you do, but I know I don't. And I'm not in a judgmental way not in a hate, hate, hate way, but are we meant to like everybody that we meet? I don't think, I don't think we are. We're all different. We're all unique. Some people I meet 
And because I'm very connected with vibrations, they're, if their vibration is just off, if I feel like they're pulling me down and some people you meet and you just don't have anything in common and that's okay, everyone is different. Some people you meet might just have a sense of humor that you just cannot get on board with. And just thinking of examples here, <laughs> if my friend, if my best friend is listening to this, you'll know who I'm on about. Actually, there's two people that I can probably think of from my past that I just could not get on board with at all. And I want to, they I, just in an annoying way. And I know that sound, that is judgy, but they did annoy me. And it was, they were just too much for my personality because I'm quite introvert, quite quiet. And these people were just in my face, asking lots of questions being noticing that that was annoying and upsetting me but then doing it all the more which then made me push I was like I cannot be around those people and I would go to places I would actually be authentic and not go to places if they were there or I would take myself out of the situation because it was just too much I remember one of the people it, it, it's a it's a male that just I just could not too clumsy too heavy he'd come and sit next to me and just be right on top of me and I would ask for personal space and he wouldn't give it to me and knocking drinks over and just drinking too much and I just could not I just couldn't and I just did not like that person did not like being in their energy I felt like it really pulled me down obviously at the time I didn't realize it was the energy it was all these accumulation of annoying things now our energies just did not match and I reflected on that thing there isn't one thing they haven't actually done anything to me it's just that we don't match and I will be that person for somebody else hopefully not in a way that they feel like they can't even be in a room with me but they don't want to go for coffee they don't want to speak to me they think I'm too much in certain ways and you know what that's okay because we all have those people that's why we're not friends with everybody. That's why we don't have millions and millions of friends because some people just don't like you. And that is okay. It really is because you just don't like some people. And that's a big one. But I think when we're younger, we spend so much time worrying about why people don't like us and trying to then fit into a box or a place that makes them like us. And I think as women as well, I'm not sure if men have the same, but women can be very bitchy towards each other as well. So when you're younger, it's not just that they don't like you and they just let it go as, as we would now as an adult, but they would make it known and they would try and, you know, do things, say things and try and twist things that, yes, we need to learn from that. And if you don't like somebody, just don't like them. You don't have to tell people. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to tell them. You protect your own energy and keep out of their way. And again, reflecting on being a younger woman, younger, you know, early 20s, when all of the catty stuff happens and you feel school ground, let that go. Just don't like each other. Get on with your life. And that's what I would say to, to my younger self as well. It's okay. It really is. Not everyone has to like you. The next, your voice is important. And this is, again, something that even now I have to remind myself that everyone has a voice and everyone's voice is important. And we tend to, I don't know, get through, go through life without acknowledging that. And sometimes, and in my case, very happily just sit back and keep quiet. When I was a school teacher, I would be in meetings and people would say things and I would really feel that I would have strong feelings, but I would keep my voice quiet because I didn't feel like my voice was as important because somebody else would speak out who maybe had a higher role than me in school or they were older, silly things that I would put them, their voice on a different pedestal to mine because of some made up thing in my head at that time I didn't understand that we are all one and 
whether wherever you work, we are all we're all going to end up in the same place. We all die and end up in a, wherever we end up, wherever you believe you end up. But physically, we maybe a box, whatever, without being too morbid about it. So anything that you have in your bank, your personal possessions, your material things, none of that matters once it gets to that point. So backtracking from that, you know, certificates and qualifications and titles and they that's exactly just what they are strip those away we're all human we're all one some of us learn differently some of us remember things differently some of us are able to put things in a different order and it sounds amazing when they speak but we're still all one we're still all part of the same race we're literally all in the same race and I actually don't want to get to the finish line before anyone else so you know the human race the end of the race is you know the end so I went off on a tangent then your voice is important now yeah we're all the same so I would sit back and think right okay I, I'm not going to say this because of whatever reason I put into my head or any situation at a party at a dinner table friends who ask for advice and if there's another friend giving advice you may step back and think okay they, they, they might know better in the wellness industry when I first joined you I would stay quiet and people would say things like oh I don't really agree with that but there will also be someone who wants to hear what you've got to say there always will be someone that wants to hear what you've got to say your voice is important your opinions are important which I guess teams up with your voice being important but I would tell my younger self that there's so many incidences where I can think back and I think Joanne why didn't you say something? Why didn't you speak out? I was actually thinking about this, uh, not this, sorry, thinking about a situation when I was in the car the other day. And it again, going back to teaching, there was a, I was given a job to do and it was, uh, if you're a teacher listening to this, you'll know we changed exam boards, didn't really know much about the new exam board. I was asked to do some work and do this boring 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 story however so I did it and the person who was checking it again who didn't have any authority over me at all didn't like the way that I had done it and at the time I remember it was when my dad was having his cancer treatment and to be honest this piece of work was not in the forefront of my mind I did my best as to where my mental strength was at that time and they dropped me off and was like told me it wasn't good enough and I kind of just said okay and then I think I went away and worked on it and then in the end it was never even used because it was COVID and the schools closed and everything happened and I just wish I'd used my voice at that time and said this is how I'm feeling this is how I plan my lessons this is what's going on with my life if you don't like it then you do your own thing with it and then I wish I'd have said something after of, I feel like I need an apology or I feel like that something needs to be acknowledged here that this wasn't the way to go about it. But I've never said anything about it. And ob- obviously it's still there in my subconscious because I was literally thinking about it the other day when I was driving. So again, your voice is important. And also just going on to those things, if you have certain things that come into your mind that you are, oh, I wish I'd have done this, I wish I'd have said that. These are unfinished businesses. These are things that we need to close the chapter on. In that scenario that I've just given, I don't think there's no point now, but for me, I need to put that aside because and learn from it. And what I've learned from it is I should have spoke up at that time and said exactly as, as how I was feeling and what I needed because they weren't supporting, they weren't helping and yeah that's what I needed and that's where I needed to also speak up and use my voice and I think that leads nicely on to the next one there's no right way to live your life so there's there isn't and again we need to release this judgment that we have on people that do things differently that live a life you know this leads kind of to success and success is such a subjective 
title, like what is success? Because every single person listening to this podcast will look at somebody and think they're successful. But then someone else might look at them and think, not think that. They will think somebody else is successful. There's no right way of doing things. And because it's so subjective, the only right way is your own way. The way that makes you happy. Because what makes you happy may not make somebody else happy. And that's okay. But that's because that's not the right way for them. There's millions and billions and billions, however many people there are in the world. That's how many ways there are. And there's going to be new ones coming up all of the time as people grow. There's no right way. There's no right way to live your life. There's no right way in even, I'm guessing, maybe in some science things and to do those. But even when you're at work and people, again, this links back to using your voice, people saying this is how it should be done. This is how you should do it. That's their way. It's not always going to work for everybody else. And I would tell that to, I think, myself all the way through my 20s because I feel like that was the time that going back to the relationship, thinking that this is the right way to have a relationship. And that's what made it so toxic for a very long time because I was stuck on it being this certain way that I thought was the right way. It was never going to be that way. And I should have just let it go. But instead, you know, I've learned from that, which comes on to another point in a minute. But just releasing this right way of doing things, right way of living, do it your way. Because you're going to be unhappy if you don't. There's letting go of this right way of living your life. La la la, what's the next one? I can't read my writing. Oh, love is not something to be afraid of. and. I wrote this one down and I think this will go to myself a few years ago when I'd had the toxic relationship and then dated a couple of people but I was afraid I was afraid of letting my guard down I was afraid of finding people that I actually liked or loved and the the story of me and my partner fiance now um I was afraid when he told me that he had feelings for me, I was like, no, no, absolutely not. This is not happening. I had a lot going on at the time. And he was there for me this throughout it, which obviously shined a light. But I was afraid of it because I'd been hurt before. Love is not something to be afraid of. And if you're in a situation now that you're scared of, finding someone to be close to or scared of putting yourself out there because you've had bad experiences. The only thing that we're going to do is affect ourselves in a way that we're not going to have love. And love comes from lots of different places. And I know I've just mentioned relationship, but your family, friends, it's really something to be cherished. Love for yourself. If you don't love yourself, then It's going to be hard to find someone to allow you to love you. So learn to love yourself first. Don't be afraid to love yourself. Loving yourself comes with such negative connotations. If you say to somebody, sorry, you would say to somebody who seems a bit confident, oh, they love themselves. It's a negative thing. Why? If they love themselves, wow, amazing. They should love themselves. We all need to love them ourselves. Love is not something to be afraid of. And I think we're afraid to love ourselves because of judgment, because of those words that people might say, oh, look at them loving themselves or or whatever words (laughs) we're going to use there. Truly, truly try and love yourself. It's the, the first step into finding love. And like I just said, I was afraid I wouldn't let it, you know, wouldn't let this love happen for a good half a year, nine months. But during that time, I did actually learn to love myself and it kind of fused together at the same time because I needed to let go of the fears, let go of the worries, let go of the expectation, let go of the the right way of doing this. And it worked out perfectly once I'd realized that. So just please let yourself be loved. Let yourself love. Love is not something to be afraid of. Next one, quality over quantity. 
I will always remember my dad saying to me when I was younger, I think I've fallen out with one of my friends. And he was like, when you get older, you'll be able to count your friends on one hand. That's all you need. And I can remember thinking, no, no, no. I'm counting my friends and making, you know, 12, 15, even, you know, however many I counted. I remember doing it. I can remember walking down the street, counting, counting my friends on my hand. Now I get it. You need quality friends. You need quality relationships. You don't need lots and lots and lots of lots of people that don't make you feel good about yourself, that don't light you up, that don't match your energy. And quality over quantity for everything. I remember when I had been younger and having, what, 80 pairs of shoes that wouldn't last, you know, last a couple of wears, even down to something so silly like that having this material need to have so many things in my life. And yeah, I was a a slave to marketing and fast fashion and buying into all of these things and people making you feel like if you don't have it's lack and you're living in scarcity. So it's just buy, 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 buy. Once I realized that that is not important and I had a huge clear out of all of the things and all of the clothes, all of the shoes, all of the handbags. Honestly, I used to have so many. I still have a dressing room, but my <laughs> it's it's stuff I wear and use everything now because I realized that, you know, it's the quality of the things that you have, not all of the things. You don't need all of the things. You don't need all of the friends because how many of them actually do really love you and do really care for you so just reflecting on that quality over quantity that's also something that I used to teach when I was still teaching in school trying to teach the kids that as well because they used to be so obsessed with I've done 10 pages like okay you've done 10 pages but I've just read it and it's 10 pages of absolute drivel whereas Give me one page where you've actually done what, done the work. And just reflecting on that when I used to teach it to the kids, I'm like, yeah, this is this exactly it. Quality over quantity. I don't care how much you've got. I want it to be good. I want it to be meaningful. I want it to make me feel good, make me feel loved, make me feel happy. Oh, which leads on to be your own best friend. I've stopped counting now. I don't know how many I'm on. But learning to love yourself and being your own best friend, learning to be kind to yourself, learning to have positive thoughts in your head. And again, this would go out to my younger self in her 20s, early 20s, all the way through my 20s, because I probably used to be my own worst enemy. And even now, sometimes I have to catch myself because the comparison, the witch wound, the unkind words that can creep in just from something so simple like, oh, why does all this happen to me? Oh, you're not going to be able to ever to do anything like that. Look how well she's doing. These are all subconscious beliefs that when we're not being our own best friend, that it's going to stick and that's we'll live the life that matches that. So a nice way to do that is just when you think like, what, what would you say to your best friend? How would you, if she came to you in this situation? And tell yourself those words. Because the more we are our opposite, the more we are our own worst enemy, we live up to those expectations. So if you believe you can't, you're not going to, because you'll put that glass ceiling, you'll stop at that ceiling. If you believe you can, and you tell yourself you, you can, and you tell yourself how amazing you are and you tell yourself how beautiful and kind and caring and you see past the things that you're looking at in the mirror your skin your hair I hate this I hate that switching it finding gratitude in those things like oh my god I'm so lucky just to be here to have two legs two arms two eyes at sea forget about the the things on the outside that you may look in the mirror and we're we're told that we shouldn't have, shouldn't have cellulite, I hate my cellulite, shouldn't have X, Y, Z. I was going to say a big bum, however, that's my 
growing up, you know, now I think it's shifted. Then there's probably another podcast. But yeah, I was going to say, you shouldn't have a big bum. But yeah, I think people want a big bum now. When I was growing up, if you ask someone, if does my bum look big in this? It, the answer you needed to be no. But now I think it's slightly different. So I digress. But making sure that you are being your own best friend, be kind, tell yourself you love yourself every day. I have it written on my mirror in my bathroom. I actually need to update it. I do it every, my plan is to do it every new moon. Otherwise you just become blind to the words because you've seen them every day. So updating it, write it where you need to see it. I love my body. I love my health. I'm so grateful to be healthy. I love my face. I love my smile. I love my mouth because it allows me to smile. I could go on and on and on, but being your own best friend, bigging yourself up, well done. Well done for doing that. Get in your car when you're driving and just ooh, high five yourself. Whatever it is you need to do to make yourself feel amazing, do it. Be your own best friend. Um, this one here. Mm, I can't not. <laughs> when it always ends up, I write in. Um, oh, I can't read that one. I wrote one, the, the last one. I'll end on this one. Magic is real. And I know my last solo podcast, I spoke a little bit about this, but I would tell myself that you know, magic is real and you make the magic. You can make your life magical. You just have to believe it. And we do have bad things happen to us, but there's a lesson in everything. Every situation, there's something to learn and there's some magic to be taken from it. Even the situations that are horrible, we feel like it's not fair. We can't get our heads around to why this is happening to us. But just allowing yourself to feel the magic in every situation. What can you learn from it? Whether the magic is a lesson, whether the magic is a wish or a dream or desire that's come true, magic is real. And when you believe, even if you just believe that, it's it's a nice feeling. It I would tell my younger self when she, I don't know, is crying in her bedroom and she's worried about what people think about her or she's worried because she hasn't got any money and she's worried because she's in her overdraft and can't pay her credit cards and she's got debt. That magic is real, Joanne. Just be patient. Take the steps, calm down, love yourself. Do all of these things that's going to help the magic come to you because it will find you once you believe in it. If you don't believe in something, then it's not there. You're not going to see it. It's like anything that we believe in. We choose to believe in what we believe. Sometimes it might it, it might not be a truthful thing. We choose. I didn't explain that very well. We choose our truth. We choose our belief. That is our choice. So if you're going to choose today to believe that magic is real and amazing things can happen, how much better is it than believing that magic isn't real and bad stuff happens all of the time? Because once we have that belief within us, once we can actually think, gosh, there is a lining at the end of the, <laughs> mixing two things up there, there's a lining, there is a silver lining and there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Because once we do believe that and we do know that we will get through this, that is the magic. Your words are your spells. Your feelings are your spells. Whatever we put out, we, we get back. And just as I'm sat here now, actually, I don't know if you can see this. So this little blue bag here. So for the, the listeners, just holding this little bag. And within this little bag, I keep it on my desk. There is a locket and also a little bag. So within this locket is a, let's see if I can get this on camera. I don't know if it'll show up. So this is a lock of my dad's hair. So when he was going through his chemotherapy and we had to shave his head, so he had big, luscious rock star locks. So I made this lock. I didn't make the locket, sorry. I bought the locket. I got me one for me and my sister and we have a, have a lock of the hair here. And this reminds me now, so it's with my crystals on my desk and every now and again I take it out and this reminds me that 
first of all, how lucky I am to still have my dad here and he got through his treatment. But this also reminds me of how brave I was and I could I got through that situation, which was one of the hardest things that I ever had to do. And still up to this point, I nothing that hard has happened since. But I trusted, I believed, I didn't ever, I, I had moments where I felt myself dropping, but then I would come back and I stepped into believing that I can get, I can get through this and I did it and I was there with my dad and he's still here, he's having a little time of his life now in Australia and this locket, this hair is a reminder for me that magic is real. So yes, he had the medicines. Yes, he had the treatment. But the magic of that was that we came together. Love, the love for my father helped to get through sitting in the hospital, doing jigsaws with him as he was in an isolation unit. And we got through that together. And to me, that is the magic. The magic of believing. The magic of stepping up and feeling my feelings, releasing the magic of having friends and family around me, the magic of science that helped him get through that. Magic is real. And I'm going to end on that today. That you do have homework. Write your own list. I can't remember how many, I didn't number them. So however many I've just done, maybe do the same, five, 10. What would you tell your younger self? And then reflecting on what you've learned from that. How is that getting you through? How is it? How are you getting through adult how, adulthood with that? So thank you very much for watching or listening. And I'll be back next week. I'm actually planning a few extra solo podcasts over the next few weeks because I have so much that I want to share. So I think May is going to be solo month um, leading up to bringing guests back in the summer. And um, so, yeah, thank you all for being here. I will see you next week.